One of the most common questions I get from plus creators is how can we set up these nurture campaigns or welcome emails and all kinds of things. So I think that almost everyone can use this to some degree. It's very exciting and really automate build a system around the app to drive engagement and send people, nurture people, send people into paid plans. Let's go. Okay. I have three different tabs open at the moment. We'll start with an app. This is a dummy app that I've made uh, in my spare time. And we have MailChimp and we have Zapier. Uh, so when you have someone make a new account, uh, if you, they will land, if they've just downloaded your app, they will land here on the welcome screen and sign up. And we want to capture the information that they present there when they sign up. There is a little bit of a tip here that I can give everybody. If you haven't seen this already, I believe it's in settings. And if you go down to settings, there's this little tab that says, ask your users uh, first and last names during sign up. I would turn that on just because it gives you more information and it allows you to better personalize like your email communications and stuff. And so make sure that's turned on and then go to your Zap account. And you can see here, I don't have any Zaps in my folder uh, and I will create a new one. I've already made the connections. Um, they should are still be valid, I hope. We'll find out. Uh, we have a trigger. So if we click on trigger, we can add the passion, whoop, passion trigger here. And we're gonna choose an event. And in this case, it's account created. Click continue. Yep, that's correct. And we can test this. It should give me some dummy information, which it does. So we'll continue with that. Now that we've captured that information, what are we doing? Well, we're going to do a step in MailChimp and we are going to add or update subscriber. There's a lot of different things you can do. Um, let's just start off easy. Yeah, and we'll add or update subscriber. And click on continue. Connect your MailChimp. And now here is the interesting part. So this is, we're gonna go over into MailChimp in order to kind of talk about these particular points. Matthias, stop me if you have any questions or if you're curious about some things. So far it's crystal clear, go ahead. Cool. All right, so what audience do we wanna use um, in your MailChimp? So that's gonna be the broader classification. I would set up an audience in your MailChimp account. Right now I have app making. That's a, a general one. Let's, let's uh, start off. Let's make something different. Um, so we make sure the freshest page and let's do. What is an audience? Is that an email list? Yeah, effectively. So if I go to all contacts, you'll see that I don't have anybody here because this is an account I don't use, but uh, you'll see that I only have two users. And users can be, depending on how big your ecosystem is, users can be from your app, they can be from your website, and they can be from other things. So you can segment them based on audiences. What I like to do is I like to segment them on tags. So I'll have a general audience maybe for my entire brand. And this is because I'm a small time creator, or I might be working with smaller creators. So in this case, here we go. All the contacts you pay to store MailChimp. These are them. So we're gonna use that audience there, app making. And subscriber email, we're gonna grab that from Passion. Same thing with the status. Now with the status, in the EU, for instance, you need a double opt-in for sub subscriptions uh, in order to send people things. However, when people download your app, in terms of service, they've agreed that you can use their email for marketing communications. So for this particular app, we don't need a double opt-in. So we're gonna hit status, subscribed, no double opt-in, we'll just leave that blank. And then if we come down here, we don't need to do any extra information in terms of groups. You can do this stuff when it gets more complicated. For now, we're gonna forget it, and we're gonna go on to tags. This one is the big one. This helps you segment audiences beyond um, something general like app making. So instead, what I will do is I will add a new tag here on the right. 
in order to better segment people. And this new tag is going to be something like new app user create. Awesome. So with this, I can come back over here and I can choose my tag. And I'm going to refresh the results so it pops up. Choose new app user. And now anybody who comes in from making a new account is going to be classified under the tag of new app user. They'll include their first name. We can't collect this information right now, so we're going to leave all that information blank and click on continue. And now we can test and we should see if I go back to my, oh, we could even do it under tags, view, we should see this new person, Aberdolf Winkler, pop up here in a second once I test this step. So test. Mm -hmm. Seems to be successful. I will come back here, refresh this. Easy. There he nice. is. So now that we can add people, let's put let's let's uh, rename this to uh, add new app users to Mailchimp. Yep, and hit publish. Okay, so that would be the first step. We could even go a little bit further because they're not going to be new app users forever. So let's say that we want to we want to take them off of that tag after a while. You can add a third step here, and or third and fourth actually. And this one is going to be a delay. And so we'll choose delay uh, for a number of, of days, and maybe we we'll, we could choose like thirty days for instance. Time delayed for days. Continue, test, it's going to pass because there's nothing really to test here. And then we'll add a fourth step, and that fourth step will be to MailChimp, and we're going to remove them from tag. Uh, remove subscriber from tag. Audience. You can also do this in MailChimp. You don't necessarily need to do it here, but we can check it out anyway. Okay, so what you're doing is you, you're tagging someone for the first 30 days after sign up as a new user and then you remove that tag, is that correct? Yeah, yeah. Because it won't always be a new user and so you don't want to be, I mean, it may not matter so much, depends on what you do in MailChimp, but this is something just so you can be a little bit more detailed. I suppose in your organization. What's the use case? You want to make sure that a new user of your app gets a great first impression and is getting a welcome email or a sequence of emails over the course of the first 30 days so that they are excited about you and your content and your products to ultimately then nurture them and convert them into offers or whatever you want to do with them. Yeah, yeah, essentially that is exactly the reason. And we also want to have a good idea of how many new app users are in our CRM. And so if we don't remove people from the tag, it can just get a little bit confusing having different numbers in different right. places. Right. So analytics almost uh, where you know how many people do I have in the, in the new user uh, tag. And then I know if it's like 67, I know that the last 30 days, 67 new users signed up. Is that correct? Yeah, and if exactly. I have in total 600 and I know, okay, last 30 days, 67 and total 300, amazing, I'm getting somewhere. Okay, it's cool. So now that we've made that zap, let's go to MailChimp. All right, this is a, a free account. So under a free account, you can't make multi-step zaps. You can only have two steps. That's fine. We'll just leave it the way it is. It, it, it would still work in theory. Uh, let's go to con contacts uh, or MailChimp, in fact. And now that we have this tag in this uh, basic zap, we can set up what's called an automation and essentially have a new journey here. For instance, welcome new contacts. That's a pre-built journey that they already have. I'm going to build one from scratch just so we can go over the fundamentals. Uh, it might be a little bit more easy to understand in the end. So in this one, we're going to say, welcome to the app. 
That's our first uh, campaign or journey. And we'll choose a starting point. And in this particular case, the starting point is when this, when this particular tag is added. So choose uh, the starting point of tag added, choose the tag, new app user, save starting point. Now this is like a zap in essence. That's a trigger, this new app mm -hmm. user tag. The next thing is a journey point or an action. In this case, we can send an email. So we have here on the left some things. Their email address from Mark, that's me. You can also edit this if you want. So you can choose a different name, a different email address. Subject. So we can set the subject. We can say, if you remember the name of my app, it's called the Berlin Beer Tour. So let's say, welcome to the Berlin Beer Tour app. And then some preview text can be something like, here are some helpful tips to get you started. What's the use case of your app? Is this just for fun or does it serve or help you in whatever you do on the side? My app? Yeah, like this beer tour app. What, what's the use case? Uh, well, I made it when I first started working for Passion. And when I first started working for Passion, I also had a small tour company here in Berlin. And our most popular tour was the Berlin Beer Tour, which was like a craft beer and beer history tour throughout the city. It was quite fun. Uh, so I made this app when I first started working to learn our software. Uh, and then since I've been here for over two and a half years now, I, I sold the tour company. Oh, congratulations. Amazing. Thanks. And the the background of the app was you have a physical it's like it's like a tour guide right you come to a certain time to a venue i guess or to a location and then you do a tour and then the app is in order to stay connected or in order to get the or everything that you shared in person verbally also in written or what's what was the idea behind there yeah it was it was it was like a tool that you could use on the tour with me so uh you could find Uh, the information about what the color of the beer means and what uh, the difference between a wheat beer and a barley beer is. Uh, and the history of a particular location in the city could be also found in there. Right. And how that relates to maybe history in Munich or something like this. And you could also do a quiz, right? On the go. Yeah. Well, yeah, there was a, there was a quiz at the end as well. So to see if they retained information and a form in the middle Uh, to help them kind of deconstruct the flavors of a beer. What a great mobile, mobile first use case. I love that. Okay. <laughs> Good yeah. stuff. Let's, let's go on with the furniture. All right, let's do that. So now we have uh, our email subject and preview text set up. I'm going to click save and then uh, schedule every day as soon as possible. It just goes out the once. So it just gets triggered the one time and it can be triggered pretty much any day. So every day, as soon as possible, you could set this trigger for other things for different use cases. So it triggers every Monday, for instance, or something like that, but we're not going to do it that way. And we're going to select a template. Uh, I like to choose whatever templates easy. And if you pay, there are like some more complex looking templates that are fun and, and flashy but uh, we're just going to choose a minimal one. So we'll choose this one here. Cool. Now we can structure our own email within this little template here. And on the left, you can add all kinds of different things as well. If you want to add more to it, the best advice that I can give you here is have a call to action and a button that links back to a lesson that people should get started on or a community that they should go to something to get them involved in the app already. Um, so I love that. So you, you have content in your app and maybe it's even the big library, a lot of courses, lots of content, but you know that particular things are most important for your clients, customers. And so you put the deep link to that piece of content into the email so that people go there to get started, to get that piece of information, to nurture them, like new content available. Here's a click and so on. Is that correct? Yeah. 
Yeah, one hundred percent. Let's. I'll, I'll give you an example. So if I take if I take people to my app, and you use the term deep linking, what does that even mean? And so I have different courses set up here. Let's uh, let's say that we want to give people the a link to the introduction, which currently doesn't sit in any um, in any pricing plans. That's fine. We'll, we'll change that later. We'll go to get started. And up here at the top of every lesson, you have a, a link that you can click and you'll notice down below it says link copied to clipboard. So now this is what we call a deep link here at Passion and I can take this and I'll put here in the button that deep link, which goes to that particular lesson and it says link to web. Yeah, that's pretty much correct. If they're on their phone and they have already downloaded your app, then this will take them to your app and to that lesson as long as you have access to it. Nice. So the app would automatically open when you tap that button? Yeah. Amazing. Cool. Yeah, it is pretty cool. It's, it's one of my favorite features. Um, the caveat, though, is, is that if uh, you're on your desktop or if you don't have the app installed, then it opens your web browser and it takes you to the progressive web app or the PWA which is Got what it. we're using here on my screen. Uh, so yeah, we have that there. Let's add button text. And the text is going to say, it's going to be a call to action. So um, I don't know. Uh, let's just do something easy. Click here. Probably want something more engaging. Like I like to, if you have a community in your app, I love to uh, suggest people go get involved in the community. So it's, you can even say here, like introduce yourself now or, um, start a chat, something like that. Love that. So we'll just do click here, nice call to action. And then, uh, some text here about, uh, welcome to the app, uh, Berlin beer tour is waiting for you this summer. Something, something, something. Cool. So easy enough to understand, I think. Save and return to journey. You can also send out a test email if you want to see what it looks like. And, and this is really all you need to do. That's your first part of your journey. Now you could add more. There's other journey points in here. You can wait for more triggers, uh, which you can also use Zapier for, you can do a time delay. So let's, let's do that. That makes sense. And let's delay for uh, a number of days and let's do, well, let's do one day. Why not? So we have a one day delay. And after one day we can send another email or send a survey. Um, or we could even untag them if we wanted to. So we can have a delay for 30 days and untag them like we did in Zapier. Uh, so there's a lot of different things you could do. I would just send them another email in this sense. And then I would say something along the lines of, let's, let's just do another example. And um, how was your first day? in the Berlin Beer Tour app. And then something to nurture them. You wanna, you wanna guide them along through whatever course or experience it is. This is an important journey for onboarding. And onboarding is, an, is a very important concept for apps because what happens a lot of the time is that you'll get people from all walks of life into your app who aren't necessarily technical people or don't necessarily know how to use an app. So you want to let them know how to use it. And so you can say here, uh, finished your first lesson. Uh, now it's time to share your knowledge with the community. And then we can go back to our app, go to our community. Oh, we'll have to do this in the, because we can't get the links direct. Oh, I'm mistaken. We can look at that. I was going to say, we can't get the links to the threads directly. 
to the channels, but they're right here. Fine. So you want to grab a channel. Let's say, uh, let's rename this one just for, for um, clarity. And let's say, introduce yourself. And then get to know each other and your favorite beers. Save. Cool. So now I'll take that link. I'll go back to here. And for this button, I'll put that link here, which is the community. And I'll do the same thing. And I'll say here, uh, make a community post here. Perfect. Save and return to journey. So you can see how a nurture campaign starts to take shape. And now we have two different days and two different emails in our nurture campaign. And you can spread this out. You can add links to pricing plans or to other landing pages or social media if you want people to follow you on there. It's a, um, and you can get good feedback as well, which is an, another thing I would suggest. Um, maybe at the first, after the first module is done, you'll see in my app that I have several different courses. Um, and let's say these courses are broken up in weeks, which you can do, or you could just make one course and then have modules that are broken up into weeks like this week one, week two. So hypothetically, we could send a survey after week one, asking our users how they found week one. And if there's anything that is unclear or was difficult to grasp or something like this, and that kind of feedback is very important for your reiteration stage, which is where you start to improve your, your product. Mm -hmm. Does that all make sense? Yeah, it makes total sense. Yes. <laughs> cool. Okay. So this is how you can really maximize use of your CRM. And that just starts with one zap. Uh, we can also grab other informations with our zaps. So if I were to go back, um, let's, let's go back, back, back. And let's go just make a new one. And we're going to look at the different triggers that are in your app and how you might be able to use these in your CRM. Kept lock is on. Okay. So different events, account created, yes. Comment created, lesson completed. This one's a really powerful one. A new chat message, a uh, new tracking check-in, plan purchased, another powerful one, and subscription canceled. So with a comment created, or I should say with a lesson completed, that's a better one, let's stick with that one. You can, you can congratulate people on completing a lesson and suggest the next tier in the, the service. Um, or you can again, ask for feedback with the new plan purchased. You can thank them for their purchase and guide them through that next product. And with a subscription canceled, you can ask for feedback about why they canceled. Maybe it was too expensive. Maybe it was too difficult. And that gives you some information you can use to improve your product or your offer. And you can do all of these uh, in your journeys. So if I were to add a new trigger, I could, well, just wait for trigger. And that trigger again can be a tag added. There's other things you can do here as well, but we'll do tag added. And we can create a new tag. Let's say, let's, um, let's go create that tag first. And let's, let's, let's say we're going to go with subscription canceled. That's a good one. Oh, I'm already logged in. Uh, so I'm going to go back. I'll have to re-log in. And we're going to go to audience and tags. And we'll make a new tag and we'll do subscription canceled. If you have multiple subscriptions, you could even be specific. 
So you can say, let's say, um, like pro subscription canceled. Awesome. Now we'll go back to our journeys. And now I'm, I'm also hypothesizing off, off of this, but let's say, welcome to the app. And the last trigger set a tag is pro subscription canceled save and then just here we'll go down and we'll send a survey in the email subject um you could say berlin beer tour um let us know why you canceled or something to this effect and we're sorry to see you go Help us improve our product. And then over here, edit email content. So we have our survey button. We're going to create our survey. We've said, yeah, that's fine. We haven't saved anything yet. What would you like to learn? Perfect. Uh, so these are all the kinds of different questions you could be asking. Um, I think it's best to let them answer. So open text is a really good one. But if you want to quantify, which for some larger creators, you might want to quantify some of these answers. It helps you just select better things then you can do like a range, select a score. So we'll, we can start there. What would you like to ask? And you can say, how easy was your on, oops, there's no space in there, onboarding experience in Berlin Beer Tour app. 10 is the easiest. Right, or like an NPS question, a promoter score, right? How much would you rec recommend our service or product to a friend? 10 is yes. totally and zero is not. And then you get a good feedback on how much they liked your app or your product. And if it was good or not good, then you can double down on it, right? Like if it's really good, like a 10, you can ask them for a review, like giving a, leaving a five-star review. If it's not so good, then maybe trying to understand what you can improve on. <laughs> Yeah. And this is where a lot of people can up their game and really turn their, their, their products and offer in products and offers into, uh, um, I guess, powerful, um, or persuasive products. Yeah. Systems almost where you always learn and know and can build off further things. And, and you have a running machine that does the job for you where you don't have to do this manually. Yes. So you can, you can mix and match. Uh, questions and have open answers and all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. So I'll just continue from there and that's fine. So we will Yes, yes, yes. And we'll go back to our campaign. Yeah. Oh, well, we didn't give it a title, but now we have our title that we could send out to everybody. So I hope that makes sense. Uh, yes. and, and I think we could stop there in terms of using uh, Zapier and MailChimp together. I think this is a good place where people can build from. And if they have questions, of course, you can, I suppose, ask them in the comments. I think one quick, quick uh, comment just here. I know a lot of our customers, they use uh, also DM automations with, with ManyChat, for example, on social media. Um, here, you could do something similar in a community where there was one trigger called comment created. So if someone creates a comment, so let's say, hey, uh, I have this. Only for the next 24 hours, I do free access or secret access or reduced price or whatever. If you click on this link or actually not if you click on this link, 
if you're interested, comment with comment with special. And if then someone comments with special, then you could create a zap which comment created contains the word special. And then if so, then send out this link to uh, a dead lesson, deep link to lesson or deep link to course or deep link to checkout. And yeah. at that checkout, That's you have maybe then a discount, a lower price or whatever. So you can do quite cool things inside the app, which people are already using in social media, but you can also do it inside the app, which is, which is amazing because that's your own world. So we have, yeah, you can do these, um, sending a DM in the app on through zap. I don't think is currently functional. No, that's, that's uh, true, but you can send an email with a link to a checkout or a deep link to a course or a lesson or a channel or whatever you want, right? You, that you can do. And then the app, will open um, because it's a deep link. But I, I know like the, the direct DM message inside the app is, is still, is about to be released, but at, at production time of this video is not yet there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so then before we get into what, or without talking about what may be there in the future, what we can do now is we can set it up like this, a comment created in yeah. a channel in your community with a filter of only continue if comment text contains, for example, hashtag special. And then the action can be, you could use almost any email service, really. You can use MailChimp, you can use Gmail, you could even use uh, Zapier itself. So it depends on how you want to set it up. Right. Um, if you send out an email. And then send to, and you just grab. Grab the right information, subject, body, attachment. So you could send a PDF, for instance, or you can send them, put a link here to a checkout, the different email subject, uh, and then you're set, you're good to go. I love that. Okay. 